Our velvet is no ordinary cat. We have the picket-fenced silhouette of a suburban house, innocuously bathed in the glow of the setting sun, but there's a shadow over the roof that would be a typical picturesque roof. It's about half peeled away, revealing an interior that snarls against a cheery norm. It's this tantalizing panorama inside of the macabre. Our protagonist, Velvet, a lustrous white cat, tiptoes across rooms, swathed in gloom, her padded paws muted against the worn, creaky floorboards. This solitary blossom in the concrete jungle crafts intricate stories around all her beloved playthings. In Velvet's mind, her toys transform. They're animated by a narrative both fearsome and haunting. Each playtime is a theater of horrors. She enacts scenes from her favorite films, retelling tales that curdle the blood. And all the time in Velvet's mind, the recurring question, what if life mirrored art? We have Mr. Snuggles, clutched in her tiny claws, becoming Freddy Krueger's notorious glow. The leash swipes she embodies the notorious figure, her wide eyes gleaming with wild light in the filtering TV glow. And in another part, you see her beneath Patchy, the patchwork quilt being shrouded, and Velvet transforming into a spectral figure out of a Korean horror film, seeing ghostly whispers rippling through silences and making all ankles afraid. When her story reaches a even pitch, when her blue eyes are watching scenes on school from an antique TV set, the vortex pours, spectral shapes and unholy forms that spiral out from the ancient television, casting ghastly images all on the room's walls, painting this grotesque ballet of shadows and light. Each scene holds the room in a deathly grip, simultaneously paralyzing and fascinating. That's the house. Over in the yard below, beneath the regal emerald canopy of an antiquated garden, a vibrant constellation of forgotten cat toys that scatter the ground. It's a confetti of color and chaos, but in this there's a relic of yore, an antique rabbit-shaped teddy bear, or rabbit? The garden's unspoken monarch. Its time ravaged facade, as with a tapestry of claw marks, whispers tales of merry chases, thumping cuddles. The rabbit teddy's presence draws an almost sacred hush, a bow of respect to the enduring testament of feline joy and forgetfulness. There's a thick harmony that unravels within this tableau, calling the effervescent colors of the toys against the faded rabbit bear, yield a poignant dance of vitality. It's this testament to time's relentless march, life's cyclical nature. The scene sears into the memory a profound memento of the fleeting joy that was brought, and the indelible mark that was left on the toys. On the edge of the familiar suburban sprawl, the forest begins. It's this woodland, liminal space where serenity interlaces with mystery of the domesticated wild, yields to nature's savage beauties. Beneath an ancient tree's gnarled roots, a hidden world flourishes, an unassuming camouflage of twigs and leaves, masks an entrance to a worn of bunnies, a labyrinth of moss-lined corridors unfurls to reveal a cozy heart, an inviting glow dancing on the left hewn walls. And over here, mirroring the house, we have sort of a cutaway from the ground so you can see inside. High on the distant hill, Sage stands as sentinel. Her emerald eyes are vigilant, her ears alert to every whisper of the wilderness. Her steadfast vigil sets the stage for any shenanigans that might follow. She will have her eye out today. Stay scared.